Hello and welcome to what will be the last free design resource that I make in 2024. If you don't know, this year I tried or like challenged myself to make one free design resource every single month all year round in 2024 and I actually did more like 15 so I only have myself to blame but uh, this has been harder than I thought it would be and there will be more free stuff in the future but this is the last one for this year. This is the last monthly one. If you follow me on like Instagram or Twitter or just elsewhere, you probably know this, but I just spent the last week and a bit in Prague for Christmas. So I just got back the other day and while I was away, I saw this, I'll show you on screen, uh, just like a blank outdoor poster frame, like a small billboard. It's always in Prague Castle. And I had a plan already for the December free download, but I've never actually done it before where you Photoshop your work onto a blank billboard. I've never, never tried that before. Um, I've not looked up how to do it before. I'm just gonna do it how I think you would do it in this video. And then at the end of the video, I will save my PSD file and I'll either put that on the website or I will make this image available that I'm gonna use and force you to follow the tutorial. So I don't know which I'll do. Um, this video is not scripted or anything. I wasn't planning on uploading anything else for the rest of the year. So this might not be like the most insane tutorial ever, but I just thought it'd be fun to make something with a picture I took on holiday. Anyway, to actually get into it, I've just made an A4 document because the poster that I'm gonna Photoshop onto the poster frame is uh, it is up there. I'll actually grab one so you can see it. So it's this poster, which is backwards in the camera, but you'll see it. Um, it is just a post that I made to promote the fact I was doing one a month. I put some of these up like near me. Uh, there's still a few left and I'm still gonna try and get people to put them up in like shops and cafes and stuff. But so I've got that design open already that I did in summer like ages ago. And I've got a document of the same size open that I am just gonna drag this image into. Now, you've probably seen some versions of this where people photograph an outdoor billboard on empty like ad space and they make it into a mock-up that you can drag your work into. Usually when people do that, they probably do it with nicer weather and they probably don't just take the picture on an iPhone. That's all I had with me. So this isn't the prettiest image we've got to start with, but as I said, this is unplanned. I'm just gonna see how it goes. So I'm just gonna rename this main photo. Uh, I'm working in 2480 by 3508 at 300 DPI, which is just an A4 document. So the first thing I'm gonna do is duplicate my background, rename it to poster goes here, right click and convert that to a smart object and then put that on top of my main photo. And just to do the editing here and make it a bit easier, I'm just gonna turn the opacity down to zero. So the way this is gonna work is whatever edits I make to this layer won't be reflected inside the smart object I just made. So for example, obviously we're not gonna go with this, but if I just press control and pull this anchor point for the top right hand corner all the way in like here and press okay, if I double click into the poster goes here smart object now and drag in my design that I showed you before, as you can see, this shows as it should, um, doesn't have that weird warp from the top right. But if I do control S now and exit that and go back into our document, turn the opacity back up, it has applied this stupid weird warp that I just did to that image, but it still preserves the smart object. So what I'm gonna do is use that to basically create a smart object that is shaped to this poster frame. We'll do some blending as well with the textures, but it's gonna keep the input part of that completely intact, like non-destructive, so that when, if you follow this through, you will be able to put your own design in and it'll work. But yeah, just to undo back to where we were before. The only part of this that I'm anticipating might not work as well as I'm planning is my example poster here has a black background, but this is like a lot of white here. So I'm just anticipating that maybe this will work better if you have a poster with a white background. So maybe later on, I'll try that. But yeah, to get started doing that, as I did before, I'm just gonna enter the transform mode, press control on my keyboard and just drag the anchor point to the top right of the poster. Same with the left one and the same for the other two. 
and then I'm just going to turn up the opacity a little bit as well. And you can spend as long as you want tweaking this. I'm just going to zoom in and like clean this up a little bit just to make sure that we're not going out onto the metal frame. When you zoomed in, if you just press space bar while you are clicking around, you can sort of drag yourself around the canvas so you're not having to zoom in and out all the time. So this one I was way out, even though it looked kind of accurate from uh, from being zoomed out. So that's fine. And then the bottom left, that's fine as well. So if I press enter, that'll commit the change. And if we turn the opacity back up to 100, you can see that most of the canvas is covered. So what I'm gonna do is just control and click on the thumbnail for the poster goes here layer, toggle the visibility for that off, and then come down to the main photo and then just with that layer selected and our selection from the poster goes here layer, I'm just gonna press Control and J. That'll just copy that section of the main photo layer to a new layer. So I'm gonna pull that above the poster goes here layer and just name that texture. So depending on what kind of poster you drop into the poster goes here layer, you'll do different blending. So obviously mine's a dark poster with greens uh, and some typography. If you were just dragging an image in, you would obviously do different blending to what I'm gonna do. Um, but yeah, having that texture asset there will help you do whatever blending it is you need to do. And now, as I did before, I'm just gonna double click into the poster goes here layer and I'm gonna pull in my poster design that I showed you at the beginning. And then I'm just gonna do Control S to save the smart object and come out. Now when I come out, there's gonna be no blending. It's just gonna look slapped on there, like very obviously Photoshopped in like that. So that looks awful. Um, don't worry, we're gonna blend this now. So if you watched my video that was about every blend mode, you will know this, but to blend light sections, we use a darken blend mode, which is gonna be one of these dark and multiply color burn, linear burn or darker color. And then to blend the darker sections, you'll notice here on the text, as I scroll through the dark and blend modes here, you'll notice the main parts that are being blended are the light sections of my poster. And then if I want the dark sections to be blended, I can go through the lighting category, um, but that has the lighter parts of my poster, not blend at all. Again, I covered this in much more detail in my video that was about every blend mode, but the overlay category blends these two. So overlay has some of lighten and some of multiply, I believe it is. Um, but I'm going to go for one of these blend modes to begin with, like overlay and sort of work from here. Um, next, I'm going to come up and blend the texture. So turning on the texture layer, I'm going to go for linear burn. Now this looks awful. So what we're going to do is duplicate the poster goes here layer, which immediately improves it a little bit. But if you come down to this little FX button here to add a layer style and go into blending options, change the blend mode back to normal. And then here where it says blend if gray, if you just pull in the anchor point on the far right side of this luminosity scale for current layer, and then just start turning the opacity down. Obviously, if you go all the way down, you can see like this reflection in the background. So what I'm wanting is a balance that still shows some of that, but enough to make it look. If there was like a Venn diagram, you've got believable and legible, and we're wanting to go in the middle of those two things. So for me, that looks okay because we've kept that as a smart object. If I go into the post that goes here and change this at all, like if I flip that upside down, for example, and save that, that little change we added with the extra blending will sort of match that up as well. Now from here as well, if you duplicate the texture again, change that blend mode back to normal and go into blending options for this one too. If you wanted to keep some of the reflections, you could mess with the blend if so that some of the highlights are still in. Go to one of the blend modes like soft light and then turn the opacity down to get some of the more subtle highlights coming through. Um, but all of this, whatever blending you do is gonna depend on what kind of image you've got. So for me, I've done two little bits of blending for my design and then two for the poster. Another thing you can do is if you just control and click on the poster goes here layer and just create a new layer. If you wanted to add in like a shadow at the top, you could just get a big soft brush and draw that in and then turn the opacity down or up or wherever you, whatever you sort of need. Um, you can just keep for whatever you're doing. If you just control click on the poster goes here layer and do all your changes in this section, 
you can have them like match the perspective of the other things we've done here. And then for me, I zoomed in with mine a bit. If you didn't do that, or if you did, uh, I can just now, let me delete these weird blending things I did at the top. Um, if I just shift click from the top to the bottom now, uh, all of this will match up perspective wise. So you can zoom it back out or in further if you want to. But yeah, I'm sure there are other ways to do this thing whatever you would call this effect like photoshopping your work with some perspective and some blending into it um if i had a poster design with a white background i would try that but i can't think of one that i have right now so maybe next year i'll do another irl poster but with a black background on it if you are watching this in the future and this is no longer available because like obviously this will be a limited time this isn't good enough to keep on my website or um, to host this PSD file year round all the time. What I will do is I will tweet this photo, like the original for this. This is my Twitter account. And if you come here and go like to whatever one of my, one of my tweets, this is just one about Glitch Machine, and just click open image in new tab, you will be able to get the image and just save it. So um, yeah, I will tweet the image and I will leave a link to my Twitter or to the tweet in the description. Uh, in fact, I will tweet it now, actually. Uh, what do I write? Photoshopping this for a YouTube video right now. So I post that and I will link this tweet. You click on the tweet, click on the image, right click, open image in new tab, and you save it from there. So if you're watching this in the future, that's how you get the image. If you're watching this at Christmas, I think I'll just throw the Photoshop file on my website and you can just use my file and the file will obviously have the original image in there too if you want to follow the tutorial. But yeah, hopefully this helped. Obviously not the prettiest poster outdoor mock-up that exists, but hopefully you learned something. And if you've got a phone and you see a blank billboard, take a picture of it, do this, send me it. If you use my photo, that's really cool. Tag me. I don't know. I like seeing stuff that you make. Thank you for all the support in 2024. If you grabbed any of the free downloads this year, or if you bought something this year, or if you're just now finding me at the end of the year, uh, either way, I really appreciate all the support. So all the links for everything I mentioned in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video, which will be next year. Bye.